Will you buy groceries from your bank? That could be the future of banking with banking as a platform. So what is banking as a platform and how is it different from banking as a service? And how it is going to impact your life? Hi, this is Sam Ghosh and today we are going to talk about banking as a platform. Uber doesn't own cars. Facebook creates no content. Alibaba has no inventory. And Airbnb owns no real estate. But all of them brought together consumers and service providers on their platforms and are dominating their respective markets. Well, that is the power of platforms. Platforms grow rapidly with the help of network effect that is the interaction between the users banking as a platform or BAAP is a banking model where banks offer third-party products and services to their customers as plug-and-play for example users can search and book flights or hotels and shop various goods right on the DBS Bank's website or small businesses can plug and use accounting, payments, communications and various other applications on Starlink Bank's mobile app. But it is different from cross-selling as we see on the websites of various traditional banks. Traditional banks often cross-sell various non-banking financial products such as insurance but banking as a platform goes one step ahead and gives the ability to use the products and services without leaving the banking platform so this products and services become part of the banking platform and the customers receive a homogeneous experience but how is it different from banking as a service Banking as a platform can be confused with banking as a service. In reality, they are very, very different. Banking as a service is about providing banking services through other platforms. Whereas, banking as a platform is about providing other products and services from banking platforms. The difference is who controls the user experience and branding non-banks or banks in the case of banking as a platform the bank controls the user experience and branding the bank also benefits from the network effect in fact banking as a platform is a tool to retaliate against the threat of commoditization of the banking industry due to open banking and banking as a service so what? How does it benefit us customers? The primary benefit is obviously convenience. Depending on how intelligently third-party products and services are appended to the banking platform. Many service providers need to verify customer credentials. Things get much more complicated when different service providers need verified credentials for regulatory purposes or simply to abate fraud. This means the onboarding for these services become cumbersome for both customers and service providers. All over the world, banks need to strictly verify customer credentials for onboarding. That is, banks already have huge databases of verified customers and can use the data to offer their customers products and services without going through cumbersome onboarding. Apart from onboarding, most customer journeys such as flight booking or shopping from e-commerce are multi-platform journeys and full of frictions. For example, if you want to book a flight 
you need to first search and choose the flight from a booking website using some credentials and then make payments using the banking credentials. This can be strenuous, especially when platforms need multi-step verifications. Banking as a platform can eliminate some of the frictions by accommodating the whole or a major part of the customer journey on a single platform. Many applications such as accounting, tax preparation, invoicing tools, personal finance tools, business analytics tools, etc. either require banking data or connection with bank databases. Many of these applications require the customers to provide banking credentials for API-based syncing. There are two issues with this approach. One, the periodic syncing means that the data with these applications are not always up to date. Second, sharing of banking data with third-party applications obviously increases the chances of data misuse and data leakage. Adding these applications as bolt-on to the banking platform itself and giving these applications access to the banking databases within the bank's security framework may solve the issues mentioned before. There is no need for periodic syncing and there is low chances of data theft or misuse. Another potential long-term benefit is that the banking as a platform may eliminate many financial intermediations. For example, the need for card networks. If the customers make their e-commerce transactions on the banking platform itself, there is no need for card networks and this can potentially lower transaction costs as well as increase security of the transactions. Well, we talked about all the good things, but there can be some pitfalls. Just throwing around some new services on the banking platform can actually lower the convenience for the bank users rather than increasing it. Many traditional bank websites are ferocious about this. They make their websites cluttered with links to too many third-party services, making it difficult for the bank customers to actually use the platform. The point is, a useful banking platform is not just about access to many products and services, but simplified user journeys. Doing that may require banks to rethink and reorient their legacy core banking systems. Another point is that large banks enjoy considerable brand power and trust. This may give them some leeway to push products and services of lower value and lower quality to their customers. As customers, we need to make the choices primarily based on the value provided by the service providers and not just because it is provided on the banking platform. Platformification is inevitable, whether in the form of non-banking platforms serving banking services or banks serving non-banking products and services. I think both will happen. Banks with lower brand power will utilize the first one to acquire customers through non-banking platforms. At the same time, larger well-known banks are likely to take the path of banking as a platform. In a low interest rate environment and under the threat of open banking, larger banks have a window of opportunity to get access to new revenue sources as well as salvage their brand value with banking as a platform. For us consumers, banking platforms may make our lives a little better and save us time and effort and at the same time keep our data safer in the hands of our own banks. Banking as a platform can be really helpful for small businesses by making banking platforms one-stop shops for running the whole business. With this, 
This is Sam Ghosh. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.